it um uh, like i say that to me is uh a very big uphill battle in most localities. I, I mean, honest to goodness, I never, ever thought Virginia would be with the most liberal governor, lieutenant governor that we have right now. Right. Never would have dreamed that, that Obama would have taken Virginia. Uh, <laughs> I've lived here my whole life, and, and um, the growth expansion in northern Virginia can pretty much manipulate the elections as far as, um, you right. know, the federal elections. And, yeah, you know, when, I first, when I first saw that guy come in, you know, I, my my friend just moved from California to to Virginia, and uh, I texted him right away. I'm like, hey, dude, sorry about that. You look like uh, you went from California to California now. What kind of gun laws you got now? <laughs> he didn't respond. He didn't look that. <laughs> yeah, and you know, the big pushes haven't been made. Um, the <clears throat> the one savior that we do have is is as of right now, we still have a pretty pro pro-gun house and senate, uh, you know, state capital, right. um, you know, and, and there's already been a few things that the new governor's tried to slip in, but they've, they've overrode him, and, um, you know, there's a lot of issues, because here in Virginia, we don't have an actual gun registration. When you go and buy a gun from, uh, you know, the gun shop, you fill out the paperwork. When they call it in, all they know is if you buy a new or used gun, and whether it's a handgun, a rifle, or a shotgun. And private sales, there are no regulations. Uh, you know, I could sell my gun to Joe Blow walking down the street, and there's no paperwork whatsoever. Okay. Uh, so if you get pulled over or, or stop walking down the street, and they, you know, they, they run your serial numbers, they only run it to be to see if it's stolen, not to see if it's registered to you or something like that, right? Exactly. Even like on my concealed carry permit, I mean, there is no actual gun because no gun I own is actually registered to me. Gotcha. I've been that way my whole life, and I've lived the majority of my life in California. And I've never registered my, in my life. I've never registered a gun. Um, you said concealed permit. What do you need a concealed permit for? I mean, out there, you have to have a uh, permit just to conceal or a permit to conceal in a bar or something? Uh, just to conceal. We have open carry. You can open carry anywhere as long as it's in plain plain view in your vehicle or, you know, whatsoever. Um just in my business, um, I've always carried a, a small pocket type pistol, um, as well as as others. And um, let's, let's let's stay on that on the on the concealed permit. Um, the the concealed permit, uh, as far as like say you're walking down the street, you have a hip holster, um, in belt hip, hip holster to where uh, you know if you if you take your shirt and put it on the outside where it's a weapon, that'd be considered concealed, correct? Yes, if they cannot visibly see it, it's concealed. And that's a misdemeanor, infraction? It's a misdemeanor, no. yep. I, I, I believe the first offense is a misdemeanor. Um, and the requirements not, for concealed? Um, there's a, um, uh, like a 20-hour class you can take or a hunter safety card. Um, I never took a class because I, I had a hunter safety card. Okay. So uh, but you? any NRA certified uh, training class is, is accepted. And that's, uh, is it something you have to wait months for, or you can just, like, walk in and get it? You know, if you got the car, walk in and get your uh, concealed permit issued to you, and then uh, you're good to go? Or do you have to say why you need a concealed permit, like a uh, business owner or a uh, private bodyguard or anything like that, just to give them a reason? No, sir, no reason whatsoever. Uh, when George Allen was governor, used to you had to have a reason, and you actually had to go before a judge and explain your reason. Uh, wow. why you should have a carried conceal years back. Um, mm -hmm. Since I've been of, of legal age, I, I'm 38 now, but they passed that law like soon as I turned 21 um, that um, they have to issue. If you ask for a permit, as long as you're not, you know, a convicted felon or, um, you know, there are no questions asked. You walk into the, I go to the local courthouse, I go mm -hmm. in, I see the um, same lady I pay my taxes to, I give her, I think it's $35, and it's good for five years. So there's a fee? Yep, 35 bucks. A handling fee, okay. No oh, sense for, for, for the paperwork and everything. Yeah. All right. Now, um, as far as, okay, so so you got a concealed weapons permit. Uh, does that entitle you to walk into a bar? Does that entitle you to walk into a hospital, uh, a federal building? Nope, no federal buildings, no courthouses. They just changed the law in a bar because the way it was set up, the way it was written to start with, you could actually open carry in a bar, but you could not conceal carry, period. It didn't matter if you had a permit or not. You could not conceal carry. In a bar. Um, 
Now, they changed that law, but you cannot drink if you're carrying, period. Right. And how they get around that also here in Virginia, the bars put up a little sticker, no guns on the premises. Um, and then if it's displayed that way, you are not allowed to take a gun in there. Even concealed? Even concealed. If, if they have their sticker on the window, no, um, you know, it's a no private problem. business. I mean, a public right. business. But uh, if they have that sticker or that posted, uh, you cannot carry in there whatsoever. Okay, okay. And well, it's kind of like our mall have... right here where I live. They have no concealed carry posted on the doors. Okay, so if it's, if there's, if it's posted somewhere, no concealed carry, then your your permit be invalid in that area. Right. Okay. Now, what about, um, say, open carry? Well, one in the chamber, is that possible? What is that now? One in the chamber? Yeah, it can be loaded. That That has no bearing whatsoever in Virginia as far as loaded. Is that the same for automobiles, transportation? Yes. Now, when transportation, uh, you don't have a concealed weapons permit, but you have your in, uh, on your hip and did they make a deal out of that? Nope. Okay. Uh, I've heard several stories where police have done some crazy things, but legally they have no grounds to stand on. What you know, about the police out there? How do they stand on it? Do they, do they uh, push for, you know, basically if you have a gun, they give you the riot act and take it away from you and check it and a safety check or any other bullshit, or are they just no nope. deal? Here. And see, when they run my plates, they automatically know I'm concealed carry. I've never right. even had one mention it to me. Okay. So, so in most cases... The cops aren't trying to push for the agenda. No, the the cops around here. I, I mean, I live just outside of Lynchburg, kind of rural area, but I've I've been all over the state, mm -hmm. and um, I've never had an issue. Uh, some of the hunting laws get a little funny from county to county. If you're actually hunting uh, loaded guns in a vehicle, some the hunting laws get kind of crazy. But as far as your handgun, um, the hunting laws have no bearings. Right, right. Most people don't take a three fifty seven to go hunting. Now, um, uh, is anybody pushing to get that concealed weapons permit uh, to be a constitution carry? Is it? So well, that well, you, don't need a per you don't need a permit to conceal carry. It's just a constitutional carry state. Is anybody pushing for that? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, because it sounds like over time, I mean, they've, they've lacked on one thing, but it sounds like you know, if you still need a, a concealed weapons permit to be concealed in public, um, you know, obviously the stickers on the on the on the uh, businesses, they're always going to have bearing. You always want to respect uh, individual rights, individual wants and needs. Um, but <clears throat> like that's their that's their end. That's their uh, that's like the first, one of the first steps is to, to make sure that you have to uh, get a, a permit to, to carry concealed. You know, and then it's going to be uh, you're going to have to uh, you can't carry it with one in the chain. And then it'll right. be, uh, you have to separate your ammo from your weapon. You know what I'm saying? It, it's yes, sir. Admit that, yeah. That's how uh, it happened. You know, it's exactly how it happened in California. Do you all have permits out there? Or no, it's you? not even a shell issue. It's a, you have to have a good reason, and it doesn't matter what your reason is. It's up to the sheriff, and the sheriff denies everybody. Oh, uh, gotcha. No, that's changing. We got it. We got it towards the shell, shell issue state, but we still have legislation to go through. Before we yes, it, it, even out-of-state people can apply for an out-of-state license, but I know it's not good in California. Yeah, California doesn't recognize that. States for yep. sure. Well, California used to be constitutional carry, used to be concealed weapons permit, and then it used to be uh, you can't have one in the chamber, even an open carry, and then it can be then it was uh, you can't have it loaded at all. You have to have your ammunition separate, and then they just did away with uh, open carry altogether. And now you can't even have a loaded weapon in your own home. It's a felony. Oh wow! Yeah, you can't carry a weapon. You can't carry a gun loaded in your front room. If you ever got caught doing that for whatever reason, they caught knocks on your door because uh, your sprinklers are running out in the road, whatever, for whatever reason, and they see a weapon on your head, then uh, they they can go, hey, is that loaded? And if it is loaded, then you go to you go to jail for it's a felony. That is crazy. Yeah, that's called, and that's that's why uh, I'm asking these questions to you about Virginia. Is is you think you're okay, but you already gave away your rights when you when you uh, when you guys agreed to uh, settle for okay, well, we need a permit for concealed weapons. Yes, and, and like I say, I have not actually kept up with <clears throat> some of the little changes that have been made, but I do know that, um, like the, I'm not, I know I'm grandfathered in because I I just renew mine instead of getting a new one. Right. Um, but I believe I if I let mine expire, I would actually have to go take the NRA safety class now. Right. I used to be uh, grandfathered in because I had, uh, I had a fully automatic and I had a, uh, 
uh, magazines, you know, high capacity magazines. But now, because we let them go so far with all these little nips and, and gobbles on the on the competition, uh, even even the grandfather clauses are gone away with. So there's wow. no such thing as a grandfather. So you have to basically uh, not be in public with your weapon and hope a little bit, you know, your house never catches on fire and they see it in there. That is crazy. Or you, but... or you go to prison. Well, you know, California, come on vacation, leave on probation, return on violation. That, that's been that way since the 80s. And I see, uh, I see that Nevada, when I went to Nevada for the Bundy Ranch thing, I saw that they, uh, they have the, if you're going to carry it in your vehicle, um, you, can't have one on, you cannot have one in the chamber. But basically, you have an unloaded weapon. Right. And that's, that's their first nip at, at the Constitution. I didn't check their, I was only there for a short time. I didn't check for the concealed weapons or anything like that. <laughs> but they had that one loan. That's, that's one of the first steps. Yep. And, and, and I actually have done a little research on the Nevada and all, and I know they don't, um, they don't accept Virginia's concealed carry permit. They're not reciprocatory. Um, so Virginia is not a, not a constitutional, or excuse me, uh, Nevada is not a constitutional uh, carry either then. Right. Yeah. So Arizona is like the state that's constitution carry, where all you have to do is be of age. And it doesn't matter if it's concealed, it doesn't matter if it's loaded. Actually, they encourage it to be loaded. If you get pulled over or whatever, and they ask you, do you have one in the chamber? And you say no. And they're like, hey, we really appreciate it if you put one in the chamber because something happens. It takes us time to get there to protect you. So that, you got that weapon to protect yourself. So make sure. So that's, how the, that's how the officer in Arizona. And, you know, I uh, stayed in Georgia for several months, and I never, I know Georgia doesn't actually recognize Virginia concealed carry as uh, reciprocatory, but the way their gun laws are written, it's insane to try to figure out. Um, right. If I believe I was okay open carrying, but I wasn't 100% sure, um, and in the vehicle, the, the language of the laws is so confusing. Um, I, I guess I'm lucky I just never got pulled while I was down there. Weapon in the trunk, um, uh, ammunition in the glove box, or a separate locked container, stuff like that? Yeah, it was some things about it could be loaded if it was locked in a glove box. It couldn't be loaded, you know, in certain places. Um, like I say, it was all kinds of crazy laws. And then if I got in someone else's vehicle, I had to have written permission to have a gun um, from that person. Like I say, it, the laws in Georgia, I don't know how anyone understands them. It's just a hosh posh way. It basically, it's um, con and not conforming, uh, uh, compromising is what they what, what, what you could call it. It's uh, it's 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 anti gun versus pro gun, and they're trying to make it to where you know, okay, if you guys ease up on this, we'll do this, blah blah blah. Basically, like the NRA. That's why I don't support the NRA anymore. It's because they compromise. When basically, it's Arizona never compromised. Arizona says doesn't matter. Constitution's constitution. We're going to follow the Constitution. We're not going to, we're not going to do your, your mamby-pamby bullshit. And that's the way NRA needs to be. That's the way Cal Guns in California needs to be. And it's the compromising that does it. Because, you know, evil can compromise with good, or good compromises with evil. The only one that's going to give up anything is the good. Evil is always win. It's good compromises with evil. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's the same oh, thing with the good law. You're exactly right. And that's the way I feel personally. I, I mean, that is my right to have a gun no matter where I go in this country. Um, right. I know I'd go to jail in a lot of places because of that, but that's just my personal opinion uh, that any American citizen that, that is legal um, should be able to carry wherever they're at, no matter, you know, what state they're in, because they're still a United States citizen under the Constitution. Right. Well, any unconstitutional law is, is no law at all and owes and, and no one owes any uh, nobody owes an allegiance to such a law. Now, uh, if, if you really want to boil it down. It doesn't matter if you're a convicted murderer third time in a row. You get out of prison, you should be able to walk into a 7-Eleven and buy a gun. There should be no law against a felon or domestic violence or any of that when it comes to carrying a weapon, carrying a gun. That's right. It's, it's been things that have been added. And, you know, I got into a debate, and I was actually wrong, but it was because of what the police have in, enforced and because everyone believed it, um... It, what it had to do with was a sawed-off shotgun. Um, and in the state of Virginia, I know years ago a fellow that was prosecuted um, and convicted for he had simply sawed the barrel off of a shotgun. And it was over the 18 and a half inches, but because it was a sawed-off shotgun, that's what they charged him with. Right. Um, but that is not the actual law. The actual law um, 
it has to be so many total inches. Uh, and a half for, con- for concealment. Any weapon, any rifle or shotgun that, that is capable of being concealed is illegal. Exactly. And, and that is the actual law. But because the cops in Virginia had, had been writing it as any that were um, sawed off, period, were illegal, it was sort of right. accepted. Even though it wasn't true, it was accepted. People were being prosecuted and convicted of it um, when it was not the actual law. Right. And they probably did their time and got out and then, said, oh, crap, I was, was arrested for, for nothing. That's uh, um, lawful imprisonment. Now they actually have a uh, you know, multi-million dollar lawsuit if you ever get unlawfully imprisoned. That's basically, if you ever go to prison for a law, for, for breaking a law, there is no law. Uh, yeah, either while you're in or, or once you get out, or it doesn't matter, even if you spend a day, you have an unlawful imprisonment uh, lawsuit. Well, that's right, and, and there are so many crazy, outdated laws, things that people have put in place. Um, several years ago, I had um, I have a livestock business, and um, several years ago, a calf had somehow gotten out of one of the holding pens there, and um, we couldn't find the calf. I, I mean, you know, this isn't wide open desert. This is pine trees as, as thick as you can imagine, and um, I honestly think someone shot the calf. Uh-huh. And uh, anyway, the, the calf was, was dead on the next road over. When I was notified, I went over there, got the calf, buried it. Next thing I know, a deputy sheriff shows up and writes me a ticket after the calf was already buried for failure to bury dead livestock. When I, well, got, to, when I got to court, the judge laughed the cop out of the courtroom. He said, I've never even heard of such a law. There isn't. But I got ticketed and had to appear in court for it. Hi, hi, hi. It would be, it would be wrong for handling of uh, biohazardous waste, if anything. Hi, 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 hi. Good morning, Barbie. Is that, is that Barbie? I'm off to the doctors now. I just wanted to say hi to you guys. Good morning, Barbie. Good morning. Hugs all around. Who's making a strange wishing noise? Oh, that's my fan, probably. Oh, okay. I'll be back after 11, and I'll be able to talk then. I'm sorry I didn't call you last night. I was to the truck, and then, uh, yeah, that went crazy. So <laughs> it was late, when I, so I wasn't able to call you last night. Did I call you later on this afternoon? I was listening. Oh, you, you heard all that? I fell asleep through most of it. Oh, lucky you. Cody, man, it locks. Is that a, all right. that a copy to you? What is that? I'll be back after 11. Thank you. Talk to you later. I thought it was a bird in the background. I guess that was the feedback off the microphone. Yeah, I think she said she has a bird. I have a cockatiel. That's why I can't talk to her. Because I think this bird that uh, he'll whistle all nice and pretty until I get in there. If I, if I talk on the phone or if I uh, uh, put on my headset and talk on TeamSpeak for gaming or anything, he will scream like crazy. This is not like my attention divided. It's okay if I'm not there. He just doesn't like when I'm there. I have to pay full attention to him. <laughs> right. It's my wife hates that. My wife is actually the one who rescued the bird from somebody who didn't know how to take care of it. Right at home, I told her, you will not have this bird in this house. And about 15 hours later, I'm like, you will not take this bird out of this house. That's all the bird. I, I'm just one of those kind of people that fall in love with animals. Right. I don't want him around. But all of a sudden, yeah, well, now I need to protect that bird so, or any animal. Like cats. I can't stand cats in the house. Sure enough. I brought this cool cat home, and I'm like, ah, damn thing out of my, oh, I love this cat now. All right, it's my cat. You can't have it back. And she actually moved to Virginia without this cat because I wouldn't give it up. <laughs> <laughs> Man. And I don't even like cats. <laughs> doesn't matter. For some reason, I just get attached to God's creatures, you know. If they come into my life, I assume that God wants me to take care of that creature because some reason or another, I'll do. Yeah, we have one of those little miniature wiener dogs it kind of happened like that it i've always been one no animals in the house but right. there he is and he owns it yep it um and i like to say it uh when you got a good I, heart man when you, when you got a good heart and you, you got a you got a, a a creature in your home that's a family it's no longer a creature that's, that's my son or that's my daughter you know <laughs> and that's right that, that's exactly i can't do the cat thing because of allergies I, i'm allergic to a cat in a house Lucky uh, you, I wish I was. If I was allergic, then I'd have been like, 
uh, I can't, I'm dying, so you have to get the cat out of here. But no, I had to be, like, not allergic to anything at all in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me, I can instantly tell when people, even if I don't see the cat, when I walk into their house within 25, 30 minutes, if it's carpet in the house and a cat, my eyes start swelling, I start itching, yeah. it's crazy. It's one of, that and bee stings are about the only two things I am allergic to. Stroke yourself scratchy? Yep. Yeah. It, um... Yeah, I don't have a, it's crazy. I was born lucky. Well, what I think what a lot of it was is, is well, I was born sick. Like, I was born with pneumonia and all these other problems. Until I was, like, five years old, I was in and out of the hospital all the time. But my mom refused to let him give me any vaccine that wasn't, like, tested over, like, decades. And so I got the basic vaccines, the, the uh, chicken pox and measles and stuff like that. But everything else, she just forged from my school records. So I went throughout life without all these crazy vaccines, and I'm immune to most sickness. Well, you know, and that's the thing. I think that a lot of the things they use. I don't know if it's my phone or if it's your phone, but I'm losing it. Can you hear me still? Yeah, it's me. I had to walk outside for a minute. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, um, like I say, I think that uh, I had a hard time with, with some of those vaccines when my son was born. Um, you know, I I just didn't agree with them. But nowadays, if you don't vaccinate them, they won't let them into school or anything else. Yeah. Well, just like uh, just like me or what happened to me, my mom forged all the records. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, we got the ones that you have, you, you, you want, you know, you don't want to end up with polio or anything weird. Um, but They've been tested for decades, you know, not the polio virus, that's just uh, an example, but they've been tested, you know, and we know the chicken pox works, we know the measles works, and so uh, <clears throat> those are the ones that I got. Uh, as my son was growing up, I did the same thing. I got him the, I got him the vaccines that I know work that have been tested for decades and forged all the rest. And again, well, son is immune to most sick. Crazy how it works. Yep. It's... Um on the subject of out there, um, where are you thinking this thing is heading now? Which, which, which thing? As far as the Bundys. I'm thinking um, this is more, now this is a, this is a keep the momentum. Keep the momentum, the, the awareness on, on the, you know, uh, the federal government overreaching. I, I do believe that it's necessary for the militia and the supporters to be there and stay there to keep that momentum, to keep that, don't, don't lose track of because we're just about ready to go to Texas now, <laughs> or, or that other one in Nevada. I don't remember the man's name. Uh, just having the exact same problem. You know, if you if you lose momentum on one, well, you're going to lose momentum. You're not even going to get started with the next one. You know, and and BLM isn't dumb enough to make the same mistake twice. They're not going to come in with sniper rifles and everything else on somebody else. They're going to handle it in a completely different way. We just don't know which way that is. Get the pressure on them. They're going to have to follow the laws. They're going to have to realize that they're under the microscope now right it it well and you know that's kind of um uh, what i've gotten from this I, I think that the presence needs to stay strong there um because honest to goodness i i don't see them sending armed forces back in there i don't see them sending anything in there i don't, I don't see them sending uh, homeland security with the you know uh, or whatever calling us the uh, ter- uh yeah domestic terrorists because, well, if anything happens to the Bundy family or any of the militia or supporters or anything like that, well, it's going to be all hell. You know, the entire nation is going to go, look, so you're just waiting until everybody backs off so you can sneak in there like little bitches. So they, they actually have to watch out to make sure uh, Joe, Joe Blow the burglar doesn't come in and hurt the family. You know what I'm saying? If anything happens to the family, it's going to be, it's going to be all hell. So they, they're not going to want anything like that. If anything, they're going to be watching out for them more and protecting them more. Right. Yeah, that uh, that's kind of the the feeling that as time has went on that that I've gotten it, um, and that makes me wonder on the like you said, you know good and well they're not going to make the same mistake twice, um, you know. So I don't know what's really going to happen down there on the Red River or that other place out there, but I'd almost be willing to bet you they're not going to send guys in camo with guns to the site. No, no. BLM is not. They are going to try to bully, I and mean, they'll still try to bully with laws. They, they'll, they'll still try to go, oh, imminent domain, oh, uh, endangered species, oh, I'm going to find you for this, I'm going to find you for that. And then they'll make it public you know, to where it's like, hey, you know, we, we, we try, we're trying this the right way. We're trying this, you know, without being the heavy hand. 
but they're not they're not cooperating or whatever, you know. So they'll demonize whoever's in their way by saying, "Oh, look, we're trying to be the right the good guys, but this guy's being criminal. He's just refusing." You know what I'm saying? They're gonna try every tactic like that because that'd be the only smart way to do it. I mean, if I was if I was the bad the bad BLM or whatever, you know, whoever's gonna take over for the BLM, that's how I do it. That's right. I mean, they've already they have first hand that the way they tried isn't gonna work. Right. Not especially now. But that doesn't stop us from, from, from going in with, with a protection agency either. Right. Wait, is somebody else trying to, trying to chime in here? Or am I just hearing my own echo? Just your own uh, echo. Yeah. Yeah. Jump in there. Hello. Hello. Do you hear that guy? Did you? Yeah. Hey, y'all. I, I, think... uh, I just got, got on with y'all. I stand up from offshore. I'm from Texas. I just, you know, see what's going on. Okay, yeah, we're just talking about gun laws. Talking about uh, what's going on in Texas on the Oklahoma border. Yeah, right on. That's uh, we're watching that as well, paying attention to what's going on. Uh, and I really hope they don't pull something stupid again, like 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 you've been discussing. Yeah, so do we. I mean, it's gonna it's, it's run its course already. <laughs> we're pretty tired of the heavy-handed uh, sniper rifle uh, approach to getting it done. You know. Uh, I mean, I, I honestly feel in my heart they're trying to start something. Uh, civil war, or revolution, or I really don't know. You know, here uh, on the Brady Ranch, you know, racism. They're trying to get, they're trying to get people riled up. Right. Instead of trying to calm a situation and come to uh, an agreement, I really don't know anymore. Hey, who, who are we talking here, uh, Texas? Who, who, who are we talking to? They, they call me Irish. Okay, Irish. Are you driving right now? Uh, Roger that, I am. Like I said, I just got in. I work offshore in the Gulf of Mexico, and uh, I just hit the beach, and I got about an eight-hour drive home, and so I listen to what's going on. Oh, bless your heart. Yeah, we can tell you're, you're driving because you're kind of fading in and out, but we, we can get the most of what you're saying. Yeah, well, I'll just sit on the side and listen to what y'all have to say and chime in with, you know. Yeah, well, as far as, as far as your concerns on the Texas-Oklahoma uh, border, the, the, the land grab there, I think what they're trying to do, a, a lot of um, – is going to, is, with starting a revolution and starting to get people riled up and everything, is they're testing the waters. They're seeing how the people are going to react. I mean, they know that they're already trying to do some stupid stuff as far as uh, prison planet, you know, basically get everybody to submit. <clears throat> and they're wondering how far how the BLM put up that uh, free speech. Now, that was bullshit, and we all know it. Now, more testing the waters to see if anybody's dumb enough to stand in the free speech zone or if we're going to get pissed off about it. Now, if we didn't get, you know, is pissed off about it, well, then they're going to go ahead and keep implementing it. And so they're just testing the waters to see if they can, basically, little kids, see what they can get away with mom and dad. And that's what the federal government's doing, is seeing how, how far they can push us and so they can know their limit and, and where, to, where to kind of encourage a little bit more. Does that make sense to you? Oh, that makes perfect sense. I mean, and you're absolutely right on your analogy. They're like children. They're going to see how far uh, they can push us. And then it will get to a point where they're going to push so hard, we're going to punch back. We're not going to push back. This is Michigan, Ken. Just piped in. Come on, Michigan. Yeah, I think the same thing. I think with the, all the stuff that went down at the Bundy Ranch, it was sort of like a test run where they were seeing how everybody was going to react and uh, if anybody would uh, come to the defense and cut and sell towers and all that stuff, no-fly zone to see how to be able to communicate, all that stuff. Yeah, you can't put a whole lot past. I mean, that's that's what the federal government, any government, you know, any entity has to figure out and figure out quick. Is you can't put a whole lot past the American people. You get them riled up, we will always figure out something. You can you can cut power, you can cut the phone lines, you can do anything you want. We will figure out how to get the communication to get the job done. We're Americans. That's what we do. We're lazy. We don't like to do things like that. But if you're going to make us get up off our couch and actually take action, you're going to get the you're going to get the full burn of the bowl, you know. Yep, I agree. I don't think they counted on all the uh, ex-military people and ex-law enforcement and some sheriffs and many others that uh, come to the come to the fight, the battleground line. I don't think they counted on that. They got a lot of training and they know what the other side uses for communications and their tactics and so on and so forth. Absolutely. Hold on, I'm getting another call. I'm sorry. Irish, where are you from? Uh, from Houston, north of Houston travel around quite a bit in, in your uh, job? Uh, mostly offshore. Uh, drive into Louisiana, fly out to the rigs. But, yeah, do a lot of traveling. Way to make a living. Right. 
Is this your no, first I, time on, or you've been kind of following all along? I'm sorry, say that again? Is this the first time you called in, or have you been following for a while? Uh, well, I got the number uh, last weekend, and I listened to it on my way out here, talked a bit. Uh, I believe I want to say her name was Debbie, Debbie or Deborah. Or Barbie? Are, yeah, Barbie. Maybe that's what it was, Barbie. Uh, I talked to her for a little bit Sunday when I went out. And, uh, I really don't want to you know, when I was out there, I listened once when I was out there, but I don't want to tie up the lines when I'm out there because they are satellite phones. So, so, but yeah, I mean, like I said, I've got a long drive, so I'll jump in every now and then, listen to it, hear what's going on. I mean, this is the only way, and as far as communication, uh, I encourage everybody to get a uh, ham radio, know your radio, and start learning it. Now, when you say ham radio, I've been researching that, trying to get a, a portable unit along with a base unit. Are you talking like a, like sort of like a CB that people would have in their vehicle, or they make different ones, or what type would you recommend? Well, I've got about five of these little Bofang, uh, what is it, the Bofang 5R. You could go to uh, Amazon. They're only $29, $39. That's a handheld? Correct, handheld mobile. And I listen to it, and I hit the repeaters. And I've heard people from Alaska, uh, you name it, all over the place. Now, a repeater, is that something that somebody else has set up and the signal's bouncing off of their antenna? Is that what you're referring to? Or? Correct, correct. These are so Those units are, are like on, 5 watts. Yes, outside, I believe. Watt they're looking, exactly, oh. exactly, yes. And then I, I think seen a, uh, like a base base unit that was 40 to 50,000 watts on the output, so I would assume that would get quite a bit more range what you're trying to talk, communicate. Correct. I think when, yeah, yeah. when it comes to ham radios, you're actually uh, above the six watts because you're not a- AM. It's actually uh, not super sideband. Uh, what do you call that? Single. Either way, I think your wattage can go higher on a on a uh, a ham radio. See, I'm just learning this. Uh, I'm studying to get my license. You know, uh, the basic ham radio operator license. But yeah, from what I've been told, you know, anything over 500 watts, you can pretty much talk to outer space. So, <laughs> on the little handheld, what is the um, distance you can talk on those now handheld to handheld we have talked over 15 well about 15 miles we, we i've gotten 30 on that. mine I've really 30 so, on mine yeah how sad to see that i mean 30 mile radius uh you can keep in communication with everybody locally to you to uh come to aid to let everybody else know what's going on around you uh, that's outstanding you don't really need to talk to somebody in california we've got them to talk locally well, as long as you can hear what's going on, that's what my concern is, what's going on. If something uh, ignites in Nevada and starts to spread nationwide and all the TVs and uh, cell towers go down, I'd like to be able to know what's going on. I just ordered one off of eBay. You can get them for, with free shipping right now, uh, $42. Um I wasn't exactly sure how those work. Um, I have fooled with the 10-meter CBs, and like you say, you can talk with the right setup and some power pushing it. You can talk 40 or 50 miles, um, but I wasn't exactly sure how those handheld hams would, would uh, communicate. Apparently uh, nowadays they got the UHF and the VHF or something along them lines. they got a couple different wavelengths or something, which I'm not familiar with yet. Also, uh, when you get the radios, the little bow fangs, they come with those little rubber duck type antenna. You can go to a place called mfj.com. They sell all kinds of ham and stuff, and they've got this little antenna, probably 14 inches long, and it's real thin, and it will expand your radius, too. For for picking up stuff? Correct. Picking up and, and sending out. Yep. I got the one that I was referring to that I got the 30 miles on was like a radio shack, like walkie talk. It's probably... 20 years old, but it actually has about an 8 or 10 inch antenna on there. That might be why I got the extra range box. The new ones are quite a bit smaller, probably a, a third of the size of the one that I have now. Yeah, well, we had gotten them, uh, like I said, I've got several of them, one for actually each member of the family. So if something does go down, we are separated from one another. We've got certain channels programmed where we can communicate with one another. Because, like you said, these cell phones go down. Cell phone towers go down. You know, I'm also a pepper, so yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, Well, you need to try to find one that also has that, uh, an external uh, 
uh, way capability of hooking up to say a car battery and get yourself a solar charger. That way, you still will be able to communicate even if the power goes out. Oh, Roger that. I've got portable uh, little solar panels with batteries. So yeah, I mean, I've got those. Uh, got a car charging. It comes with an adapter. I don't know if they've got a academy up there, but they, it sports. You buy anything from fishing rods to reels to you name it, golf clubs. But they have a little solar panel there, built in battery, and they will charge stuff. Yeah, I got a deep cycle battery for like a marine use, and then I got a solar charger for that, and it works very well. And there you go. I was reading the reviews, and, um, it says you have to actually program those things when you get them. What all does that entail? Well, you, uh, if you buy a cable, it, it comes with a disc, a programming cable. It will come with a disc to program it. We've got a, uh, one of our members. He's with military communications, and he's really familiar with these. So he programs every, all of our radios for us. Uh, I can turn it on and switch channel. That's about my extent on that. Now, when he probably says program, he's probably got different. Uh, maybe you can program into the police channel or the or the EMS or a special channel that you want to communicate with your friend. That's what I would assume. I'm not sure on that. Right. Well, I mean, he's got repeaters. He's programmed in. He's got certain stations, channels, frequencies, however you want to call it, programmed so we can talk to one another as well, and also right. the local repeaters. Well, that's what I need to get up and more information on the local repeaters so you can extend your listening range. That's what uh, is important. There are apps out there for uh, smartphones where I can't, I don't remember which, what it was called. I think it was uh, Tower Search. I don't remember. But it will locate certain towers in your, in your general facility uh, area where you can, it will tell you what it will receive at and transmit at, and you can program those as well. Like I said, I, I'm a novice. I'm just getting into this here now, and so I've got a lot to learn. Right. Well, at least you're trying to learn and uh, get the necessary equipment that you need. As far as your license go, I, I was reading on there that you don't need a license if you're transmitting at a, an emergency situation, I guess. Correct, or listening. I mean, I listen now. This individual I was talking to, I could talk to him and go work. Somehow it works underneath where I go underneath his license that he is teaching me. So, it, so I really, like I said, I really don't know how all that works. But sort of like an apprentice? Well, for the most part, yes. So if, so if, if the FAA comes on and says, uh, who am I speaking to? Well, I don't have a call sign. He will come on and say, this is such and such, uh, and, you know, we are giving lessons and blah, blah, blah. So. But, I mean, it's your license. It's a 25-word question, multiple choice, but there's like 300 different questions they can ask you. Uh, and it's a basic course. It's, uh, I think it's, uh, oh, God. I don't know, it's just not long. A couple of people have done it. It's fairly cheap to get your basic ham license and a call sign. You probably should have a, uh, a Morris Code book or something to... Too, I now, suppose. The, the farther on you get into your, uh, there's three different licenses. I know a basic, uh, that to all the way to an expert, and they don't call it an expert, uh, but at that point, yeah, you got you learn the Morse code. Now, my neighbor next door to me, he's 92, and he's still on his ham radio. When he had to take his license, he had to learn Morse code. That seems like a pretty important thing to, to know nowadays. It is. It really is. I mean, I believe on the Nevada State Police channel there, one I think it's Comms One comes on now again and says they're transmitting in Morse code. Some of the stuff they're sending across the airwaves out in Nevada, they're even coming across Morse code on their police scanner channel. Really? Yep. You pipe in just about every night saying that there's Morse code going across there. I guess there's certain military. Uh, uh, radios out there that actually scramble the signal or something was going across, but it's hard for a civilian to pick up on those to buy one. Maybe that's what they're doing there. I don't know. Yeah. No, I really don't know on that. Oh, 
Um, anybody that stays on here, pretty much, or if y'all aren't doing anything tonight, um, make sure y'all are in here at uh, 9 o'clock. Got something special yep. going on? Just, I, I can't really say nothing, but just be here at 9 o'clock. All right. Um, 9 o'clock Central Time, I guess that, that is. It's 10 o'clock my time, but uh, make sure y'all are listening in right around 9 or just a little bit after. Will do. I'll sure tune in. The, the regular, uh, well, used to start at 8 o'clock Central Time, but last night they had two different uh, boots on the ground call in with updates, so that was uh, good to hear. For the, the one guy was the head of security for the ranch. Right, and and it's going to be, it's going to be a caller in about that time tonight. And like I say, just make sure y'all are listening. Is his name Comms One? No, 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 no. It it uh, like I say, just be here at nine o'clock. I will. I will. Central time. Central time. That's ten o'clock our time where I'm at actually. But they had a lot of good information there. I'm not sure if y'all heard yesterday that, but they did uh, set up a Walmart registry for the uh, boots on the ground at the ranch, what the items that they needed out there. They actually got like a, a wedding registry that you can go on to and pick stuff and send out, and then they'll get it designated person will pick it up from the Walmart machine and then take it to the ranch. And all that information is on the community conference call uh, site on Facebook. Well, I myself got a little bit of work I need to get done, but I will check back in later. Nice talking with everybody, and y'all have a good day. Oh, you as well, and uh, I think I'm going to do the same. Go ahead and hang up now. Charge my phone, keep my phone charged. Like I said, I still got a long drive home. So uh, I'll check in periodically, and I will tune in tonight at 9 o'clock. Until then, be okay, be safe, and uh, God bless each and every one of y'all. Yes, sir. Y'all have a good day. All right, bye. This is a high one. Who's here? Hello? Hello, this is Kevin at USMC, Florida. Hello? Anybody on the line? <clears throat> Hello? If you can call me back, call me back at 904-716-2597. Um, we have a staff of writers for Uncle Sam and the Scotty Children, and one of our writers just called me and said she has uh, some information. She's trying to verify that... Um, BLM, along with DHS, is planning on hitting the Bunny Ranch again today during a party that they are having, and uh, we're trying to verify that. De todos los sistemas, oprima la estrella. Usted puede volver a este menú en cualquier lugar en el sistema, oprimiendo la tecla de estrella cuatro veces.